<laughs> I'm always here. <laughs> We're gonna get started in about one minute. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Dallas ISD virtual community meeting for a Dallas hybrid at Stephen J. Hay. Um, this is a new concept school, and we're so excited to be able to share information with you about this exciting new program and the renovations of this campus, thanks to funding provided by the Bond 2020 bond package that just passed this past year. Um, you will be able to, we are broadcasting live through our broadcast link and also on Facebook Live simultaneously in English and in Spanish. If you're joining us on our broadcast link, you can submit questions uh, and comments using the link found at dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020 meetings. Again, that's www.dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020 meetings. If you're joining us on, if you're viewing us on Facebook, um, welcome to social media. And we want to make sure that you know that you can ask any questions you may have simply by um, make, suggesting them in the comment section on Facebook. We are monitoring both Facebook on English platform and our Spanish platform. So you can ask any questions there. We will be answering those questions and sharing those comments in real time. So without any further ado, we do want to go ahead and introduce the wonderful um, executive director for this particular program. Um, Dr. Bedev, please take it away. Good evening. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Nancy Bernardino, executive director for the Hybrid School, and it is my pleasure this evening to introduce you to our fabulous principal, a seasoned principal who is uh, in collaboration with our community and our new students is creating this one of a kind school for Dallas ISD. So doc, uh, presenting uh, Dr. Olga Romero. Thank you, Dr. Nancy Bernardino. Thank you, Ms. Bell. And thank you to all of you that are, are joining us tonight to learn a little bit about Dallas Hybrid Prep at Stephen Hay, an innovative school and a transformation school at Dallas ISD. Dallas Hybrid Prep will serve fourth, fifth, and sixth grade this upcoming fall with only 75 spaces. So it's very important that you start your application right away. We will serve with a flexible learning environment where the kids will be able to learn from home three times a week and will learn in our campus, in our beautiful campus that will be presented today, twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We will focus on project-based learning and interactive, engaging um, gamification platform for all the kids. And now I would like you to uh, welcome our um, District 2 Trustee Dustin Marshall, who is joining us today to give you a welcome as well. Thank you, Dr. Mara. I appreciate it. And uh, good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm thrilled that you guys could join us tonight. This is uh, one of several community um, sessions that we're having as a result of the 2020 bond package passing last November, which um, thank you to all the voters out there that overwhelmingly approved uh, a bond of about $3.5 billion which allows us to do lots of cool things. Uh, we get to invest in upgrading all of our existing schools, but we also get to uh, innovate with schools like this one that you'll hear more about today. Um, this is one of our choice schools and I'm very excited uh, to have a new school in District 2. Um, I represent District 2 on the DISD board and for many, many years, we've had 15 schools in District 2. So this will be the 16th um, school in District 2 and I'm super excited that uh, it ended up in, in my trustee district. So. Glad to have uh, Dr. Romero um, at the helm and uh, looking forward to um, sharing some exciting developments with you about the school tonight and also getting your input. Um, I think we've all been through a, a very difficult period with COVID, but um, if it's taught us anything, it's reinforced the idea that students learn in different ways and some students um, are very able and capable to thrive in an online or virtual environment. Um, so. Um, you know, and others are not, as we know, but um, for those that are, this is a great opportunity and it's something we've been working on even before COVID first many of, forced many of us to be virtual. So um, look forward to sharing more about it with you tonight and uh, encourage anybody who's interested to apply and, uh, and we look forward to getting your feedback. So thanks again for being here. Thank you, Trustee Marshall. And now uh, Mr. Stevens from WRA Architects will present the concept.
Thank you. Um, so real quick, uh, so this is the uh, Stephen J. Hay, Hay Building is what it used to be called. And um, I've had the pleasure of being in what its old use was, was the old bond office for the, the bond programs back 2008, 2015, before the bond office moved over to the North Central Expressway building. So um, I've had the pleasure of being in this building many times and it is actually on the historic registry. So you'll notice that the exterior is not really changing. This is mainly just an interior retrofit. So just some uh, project summaries. Um, interior, we've got lab, cafe, uh, gym, administration renovations. Basically the entire building is being um, renovated from the interior. Um, everything that you'd have in a new building is just uh, compacted into the old building footprint. Uh, but it is not a very large building. It's about 22,000 square feet. So um, there is a uh, obviously a limit of how many people can be in here. So if you want to join, make sure you uh, apply. Some pictures of the existing um, office area um, partially demolished. Um, they are getting ready to get this stuff built back in for the end of the uh, summer. Just some old pictures. The uh, existing front entrance is not really gonna change. So the historic look of the building is not really gonna change at all either. Just some interior pictures. Um, it used to have a lot of plaster walls. Um, at one point, this was a non-air conditioned building that had uh, kind of high up windows and ventilation and stuff. Um, sometime probably in the 70s or 80s, they put AC in here and lowered some of the ceilings. So um, the windows and stuff you didn't see, um, they're all kind of gone. Um, but we're going to try and open that up as much as we can um, with a lot of glass into the windows and the, um, the classroom so you can kind of see outside from almost anywhere in the building, which should be a nice, nice feature. Um, and as the principal mentioned, this is going to be kind of a flexible learning environment for a lot of the students. So along with that, there's lots of visibility. Um, you can see what other people are doing. It should be a really nice place to be. There's also some more flexible spaces in here. This um, is a, a larger space that can kind of be divided into three different areas. This particular one would be like a digital theater. The other half could be music or some other function, um, but it's flexible and they can kind of use it as, as needed for whatever programmatic uh, functions or teaching needs they have. This is kind of just a typical classroom. There's some glass between the corridor, but not a whole lot of glass. So there's still some security and privacy that they can have. Um, and you can still kind of see in the classroom next door. And of course you got these big, nice existing windows that you can see out in pretty much all the classrooms. Uh, this is the uh, site plan. David, you want to say anything on that? Hey, yeah, thanks, Seth. Uh, David Bates, uh, Assistant Superintendent, Maintenance and Facilities. And I, would, I want to thank WRA because we we approached them with a very aggressive time frame to put this all together. And then Kenneth Gretz kind of leading the, the charge to, to make all of this happen in, in, in time for school. Um, so on, this, on the actual site, like Seth said, not a lot changing on the building because it is historic, but on the property, there will be some changes because we want to make sure that uh, we can get the kids outside and learn and uh, have fun and recess. So where you see area two, that entrance there, there will be a fence along Prescott um, fencing this property in all the way down to Gilbert. And then from Gilbert, it will cut across to the building um, right there. It'll cut across to the building. And in this space, we'll have a field um, so the kids can have recess and we'll also have uh, a playground swing set and uh, really looking to partner with cool schools too if, if possible um, at this location. So it'll be, a, it'll be a great space for the kids to go outside at lunch and even after school activities, but it'll also be safe and secure. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Seth. All right, moving inside the building, um, the classrooms are essentially just on the east and the west wings, which these were all divided up into the um, offices before and you couldn't really see what was going on anywhere, but we've got glass along the corridors. You can see from the corridor out through the classrooms and actually see through the nice giant windows that are on the campus. Um, that's number 10 and number seven, that's essentially their cafeteria and also kind of a, uh, a media center um, cafe lab 
um, and gymnasium, excuse me, that's not the media center, but um, a cafeteria, um, sort of an indoor gymnasium, just an area they can kind of run around a little bit. They've got serious sports they need to play. They'll probably go outside for that sort of stuff though. Um, on the south end, the administration area. So it's kind of a secure vestibule reception, some conference rooms, some offices, uh, usual things you'd see in there. As far as uh, lunches, this is a pretty small campus. So there's not going to be a, a full service kitchen in here. All the uh, food will be uh, delivered from the uh, more central um, district uh, food service area. And they will drop those off every day and the kids will pick up their lunch. Um, and they will eat here, but um, they won't be necessarily made here. It'll be dropped off. On the second floor, um, we've got kind of an art room, some storage, four more classrooms, a uh, kind of a studio work area, kind of on the south here, um, some more restrooms, uh, and then this kind of large multi-purpose area that could kind of be divided up in however it needs to be with these uh, partition walls. It could be a media center, it could be um, a uh, choir area, um, anything they really want to use it for, they can kind of use it for, but if you leave it open, shut it off, use it for functions, that sort of stuff. Um, that's the gist of it. Um, if there are any questions? What a great concept and what a great, um, what a great use of a historic space, transformation of historic space. Um, if you're joining us online, we want to encourage you to have any comments or questions. If you're on Facebook, please share them in the comment section. We'll get those answered for you. Um, if not, if you're joining us on the broadcast feed, please submit your questions at dallasisd.org, Bond 2020 meetings. Um, while we're waiting on questions to come through from our audience, um, if Dr. Um, Principal, if you could share with us a little bit more about the concept behind the school. You said that kids were only going to be here. It's a hybrid format and children will be learning at home three days a week and two days a week. If you could share a, bit, a little bit more about the actual concept behind um, Dallas Hybrid. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Bell. I appreciate mm -hmm. the question. So our school, like I said at the beginning, and if you're joining us, welcome. Um, my name is Dr. Olga Romero and I am the founding principal of this innovative school. Um, we want to give a big thank you to the transformation of the Office of Transformation Innovation for bringing this innovative school to life. Our kids, our our kids will come to our school three times, sorry, two times a week, twice a week, and then three times a week they will learn from home because we strongly believe that there is a need to provide a balance between home and home learning and in-person learning. This school is very unique because it will have also a project-based learning model of learning where the kids, when they come into our building, they will learn with projects, hands-on learning, and a very specific and particular um, gamification platform thanks to a partnership with Stimuli where we will have our kids build their own world, they will have their avatars, and they will have an engaging learning experience from home. And it's very important that I have to say that it's only 75 spaces, and it's important for everybody to apply now because spaces are going really fast, and we have very limited um, spaces in our school. Wonderful. We do have a question. Uh, what is the camp's expansion plan? You said that you were starting with sixth grade. So what's the actual um, expansion grade beyond sixth grade? What's the expansion plan? So as of right now, we are thinking to adding every year additional grade levels. We are thinking about moving up to seventh grade and maybe third grade. And then the next year we'll go to fourth grade and so on. Okay. So ultimately the campus will be a sixth through eighth grade campus or will it be a pre-K through eight campus? So it is my understanding that we are thinking about going into like kinder all the way to eighth grade. Wonderful. Okay, great. I think that answers some questions. Now you said that we need to apply. Um, how can one apply for this school? It's fairly easy. You've got to go to dallasisd.org slash choose Dallas and find that hybrid school. Um, if you need um, assistance, you can just contact us. You can contact me. My email is oromero at dallasisd.org and I will be more than happy to support you in that process. Great. 
So once again, if you're joining us on Facebook, please feel free to share any questions or comments in the comments section. If you're joining us um, on our broadcast channels, you can um, ask your questions at the website shown on the screen, which is dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020 meetings. Um, again, that's dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020 meetings. Okay. Now you had mentioned a unique partnership that you have, I think you said with Apple and with another um, company. Could you expl expound upon that a little bit more? Absolutely. So we have a special partnership with Apple and all of our professional development for our teachers and just understanding how to use the best technology in this school will be provided by Apple. So we're very excited about that partnership. And we're also partnering, partnering with Stimuli and Stimuli is building our online gamification learning platform where the kids will be able to go into like an enhanced virtual reality world and they will create their avatars. And as they do their assignments and complete their work, they will earn tokens so that they can upgrade their avatars and have a really engaging learning experience. I also just wanted to offer one minor point of clarification, if you don't mind. The, the application website is uh, dallasisd.org slash choose Dallas ISD. Um, it's, so you have to have the Dallas ISD at the end, not just choose Dallas. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. So again, for those who wanted to know how to apply, that website is dallasisd.org forward slash choose Dallas ISD. When you go there, you simply, you can either transfer to this campus if you're already one of our parents, or you can apply if you're coming from outside the district. The process is relatively simple. And also, if you check on our Facebook page and on our website, if you need assistance, our One Centers are available to always assist you. Their hours of operation are on our website, as well as they're having events across the district to help with real time. If you're having any questions, any assistance with how to apply for this and other Dallas ISD Choice Schools. Um, someone asked, when does this school start? This fall, we're opening in a, in a few weeks ahead. Uh, we're starting in August with our school. And like I said before, three times a week learning from home, twice a week they will be learning in our campus as Stephen J. Hay. Okay, and we have a question about will the students be issued Chromebooks or something like them? Absolutely, technology is our way of enhancing the learning experience and the kids and the students, our scholars and our teachers will have um, state-of-the-art. Uh, Great. Um, we're good. We had a number of people join us late. So Seth, if you wouldn't mind just going over the presentation again to see the physical changes to this unique hybrid school and in this historical um, building. And again, if you're wanting to ask questions and you're joining us on Facebook, please put them in the comments section. If you're joining us um, via the broadcast channel, please um, Submit your questions at dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020 meetings. Go ahead, Seth. Yes, yeah, so just uh, kind of recapping on what we talked about earlier, the Dallas Hybrid at Stephen J. Hay is uh, in an existing building that's on the historic registry. Um, it used to be the uh, Dallas ISD bond office for maybe the last 10 years or so. Um, and they've since moved over to the North Central uh, building and uh, leaving this building vacant. And so now this is being renovated into the uh, Dallas Hybrid at Stephen J. Hay. And uh, since it is on the historic registry, there's very minimal work going on on the outside of the building. It's gonna stay um, relatively untouched. Um, this project is mainly just an interior renovation finish out. So it's got pretty much everything you normally have on um, in a new building. Um, it's a more compact building, which uh, limits the amount of people that can be in there. So um, I believe they're trying to have a maximum of 75 people in here at this point um, and see where that goes from there. But it's about 22,000 square feet. And so it doesn't necessarily have every single thing that a, a normal school would have, but it does um, have plenty of classrooms. Um, and I'll get to the floor plan in just a second. So this is just some pictures of before the construction. These are some of the old corridor walls, which had kind of a, they used to have uh, windows up above these, but they got blocked in whenever they lowered the ceiling to put in the AC. Um, 
probably 50 years ago or so. Um, we're going to open these walls up and put kind of uh, glass in here. So instead of seeing these solid walls, you can actually see outside of the building, you can see the nice uh, glass exterior windows that are there when you're walking down the hall, as well as see what everyone else is working on. Um, it's kind of meant to be an open, open concept school with uh, collaboration and, and lots of hands-on learning. So this should help uh, people be excited about what's going on inside the classroom and see what other people are doing. There's uh, several multi-use spaces in here. And this is uh, a kind of a digital theater that has some movable partitions that could also be split up to you so as a music room or something else like that. This is a typical classroom. You can see there's some glass in the corridor so you can see out from the corridor through the classroom and out through the windows and get some nice natural light. And then you can also kind of see a little bit into the classroom next door, which helps uh, with the learning environment a little bit too and just keep people excited. Uh, this is the site plan. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over what David Bates said earlier is uh, at the number two here, there'll be a fence that kind of goes across to kind of enclose this a little bit um, for just some open play area and then a little playground kind of up here in, in this corner. So David, feel free to correct me if that's not quite the case. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's correct. We'd like to do a nice uh, black wrought iron fence and um, fence just a, a portion of that back property off and then and then do a nice field. Um, we're looking at possibly doing a little small turf field so the uh, the kids can have recess and, and play. And then of course a playground area. Great, thanks. Moving inside, uh, we've got the classrooms that are gonna be on these east and west sides. These used to be just offices, so they'll be opened up. You can see the kind of the glass along the corridor wall. So you can kind of see natural light pretty much anywhere inside this building. On the south, you've got the administration area, which is just a couple offices, um, reception area, a little conference room, and a kind of a little workroom. Um, this number 10 and number seven is basically where they'll eat lunch um, and also kind of in gymnasium, but it has a movable partition that kind of goes across and they can close that off if they need a little more privacy or uh, sound control, uh, or they can open it up and, and use it more as a multifunction space. Um, speaking of the cafe and the lab where they'll eat, um, this is a fairly small building, so there is not an actual full service kitchen in here. Um, food will be uh, uh, prepared off site at the district facility and then will be dropped off uh, on a daily basis um, for the kids to have lunch. Moving upstairs, we've got an art room kind of over here on the left side, and a little uh, workroom for the teachers, and then four more classrooms with uh, glass and visibility. Uh, on the south, there's a kind of a studio room, which is kind of just a work room that everyone can kind of collaborate and um, work on projects. More glass in the corridors there. And then this big yellow block is sort of a big multifunction space. So uh, it could be a fine arts music area, or it could be a digital theater or, or a combination of the two, or it can be used however the, the, uh, the school wants to use it. Um, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat or on the Facebook. Gr Wonderful. Do we have a do do you have a couple more questions coming in and and overall the response? We're getting a lot of thumbs up and a lot of hearts, a lot of hugs over the concept and over what they're seeing for what the community is seeing about um, Dallas Hybrid Preparatory at Stephen J. Hay. We had a question, another question regarding the grade levels. If you could clarify the grade. Um, now you're taking applications for sixth grade only this year, but you will be expanding beyond that. Is that correct? No, Ms. Bell, let me clarify. Thank you for the question. That is a fantastic question. Mm -hmm. This year, we will start with fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade. And we only have 25 spaces per grade level and they are filling up really fast. That's why I'm encouraging everybody who's in this call, call your family, call your friends, apply now, uh, dallasisd.org. Let me make sure I, may, I did it, I say it correctly, dallasisd.org slash choose Dallas ISD, right? That, that's, that's correct. That's it, we want you to choose Dallas ISD. <laughs> when you go to choose Dallas ISD, you wanna choose Dallas Hybrid. We want you to choose our school. We want to ensure that you have the best option for your scholars, for your students. 
Our kids will go into our building twice a week and they will learn online three times a week so that we can have a balance between school and home life. Wonderful. So again, just to make sure we have it correct, they are accepting applications for fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and you apply at dallasisd.org forward slash choose Dallas ISD. Only 25 spots each, and the, they're filling up fast. So this is a unique opportunity for, you, for um, our parents and for our students to so want to make sure that everyone knows what they need to do. Um, there is a question regarding connectivity and internet access. Will there be, will the kids be provided with internet? I'm assuming they mean um, hotspots or different ways in case they don't have access to the internet at home. Will there be assistance provided for that? Dallas ISD has a commitment to connectivity and that the answer is yes. It is important that every child in our school and across Dallas are connected to high quality instruction at all times. So I would, I would say yes. Okay, great. That answered that question. Someone wants to get a little bit of jump ahead. They're asking how many spots, how many spaces are left? And just so everyone knows that Dallas, at choosedallasisd.org, you can choose the school and you also have a, another um, option there to apply for your secondary choice. That because we are in the open application period, it's difficult to say exactly how many spots are left at each grade. But so everyone knows the school is only accepting 25 fourth graders, 25 fifth graders, and 25 sixth graders. They will continue to grow the campus both up and down until it grows to be a pre-K-8 campus. So if you apply and get a spot for the sixth grade, you don't have to worry about finding a campus for seventh grade. You'll just stay right at Dallas Hybrid. Um, and again, if you if you're at the fourth grade, check us next year if you have a third grader that you're interested because next year they will be expanding until they grow the campus out. Um, now we do have, um, this is unique space as you can tell by the presentation because it is a historic campus, but there's also accommodations to meet the challenges and the, the wonderful opportunities presented by your partnerships. Uh, we don't have a lot of questions about the building itself, but um, if you could just talk a little bit more about that Apple partnership and the other partnerships you have that the students who attend the school will be, uh, and the teachers who work here will be um, exposed to. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Bell. And I know everybody is curious about this. We do have a partnership with Apple because we strongly believe that the professional development and the way um, to encourage like the enhancement of technology and learning within their system is just top notch. So we are very proud to be partnering with Apple. And at the same time, we're also partnering with the company called Stimuli. They are a local, uh, local technology company. We're very excited to partner with a local technology company. And we are, they are building our virtual enhanced learning experience with avatars in a virtual world where the kids can go in and learn from home into this virtual world where the kids will be able to create their avatars. They will come to school like a virtual school. They will earn their little coins and when they do their homework and they will be able to have one-to-one -one communication with the teacher and learn from that system, um, just like a regular school, but online. Great, we also have a question from a grandparent who wants to know for her, for her potential student, uh, will the students be required to wear uniforms? That is a conversation that we're having with the parents right now. And actually tomorrow we have a design studio with our parents. So if you go to our Facebook page, um, at Dallas Hybrid Prep on Facebook, please check out our invitation so that you can participate in those, um, those panels and you can let us know what do you want for your kid. What a wonderful opportunity. So if you go to Facebook, you can go to your Facebook page at Dallas Hybrid Prep. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. So you at Dallas Hybrid. Invitation yet. Great. So at Dallas Hybrid, beyond this meeting at Dallas Hybrid Prep, at Dallas Hybrid Prep, excuse me, on Facebook, you can see how the design team is moving forward. You can participate in actually designing and creating this school. What a unique opportunity for our parents and for our students. And you can, of course, engage with the, with the leadership team for the school and others and find out what's going on. Um, we have another question. Are there schools 
that are exclusively for children who need special education? Um, that's the question that came through our Spanish channel on Dallas on Facebook. Just to make sure that I answer correctly, are, is the parent asking if we're going to serve special education children? I think there's a broader question. I believe they're asking, yes, will you serve special education students? <laughs> but also they're asking about, is there a school that I guess is for special needs children as well? I can field that one quickly. Um, state, law in te state law in Texas requires um, kids uh, with special needs to be educated in a general education environment. So um, we can't create schools that are uh, that are public schools in Texas that are uniquely tailored only to educate kids with special needs. So th they are educated in each of our other schools. And this school, like every other school in DISD, uh, would accept applications from kids with special needs. Great. And we and shout out to our special education department. They're doing a fabulous job on inclusion across the district and meeting the various challenges and needs of all of our students, no matter how they are ultimately able. So we want to give them a big kudos on the wonderful job they do every day working with our students across the district. I, I think our questions seem to be kind of wrapping up here. Um, we do want to let everyone know. So as we're, we're going to go ahead and begin wrapping the meeting up because it looks like we've slowed down some as far as asking questions and new people joining us. I will share that in addition to having this, of course, on Facebook, and if you're on Facebook right now, we encourage you to share, share, share with your family and friends so they'll know about and learn more about this wonderful opportunity. But also, this meeting is being recorded and will be shared on our Dallas ISD website at dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020. Again, that's dallasisd.org forward slash bond, B O N D. 2020. Uh, and then, of course, the principal has shared the fact that they're out there on Facebook and doing some design things and, and truly unique opportunities for engagement of parents in the community. So look for their Facebook page. Um, as we kind of bring this meeting to a close, um, Trustee Marshall, would you like to share any closing remarks? Sure, sure. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Um, you know, one thing that occurred to me during this discussion is that we've uh, referenced choice schools quite a bit without perhaps providing enough uh, background context about those. So, um, you know, uh, the principal mentioned the Office of Transformation and Innovation, and I think this is one of the programs that's been really innovative that the board and the superintendent and his senior leadership team have passed over the last couple of years. And as a result, we have dozens of what we call these choice schools. Um, and whereas many of us probably grew up in an environment where you attended your local neighborhood school based on where you lived and the attendance boundary around those schools. These choice schools are unique in the sense that anybody within the uh, territory of all of Dallas ISD can apply to one of these schools. So, um, and not only can you apply, but there's no admission requirement from a, from a testing perspective like our magnet schools have. So anybody within Dallas ISD's territory is able without a test to apply. And we also provide transportation to these schools because we believe that you're not really offering choice if you don't provide transportation to get to that school. So um, given those dynamics, it's, it's very easy to apply um, and uh, you know, easy to attend. So I hope many of you will consider this option. And if, uh, if this school, this hybrid model is not the best fit for you, I, I still hope you'll go to the Choose Dallas ISD website that was mentioned earlier, because there's dozens of other um, unique options within Dallas ISD that, that you know, there's kind of a, a flavor of school to suit every, every need. So I, I hope you'll uh, consider visiting that website. Um, and I hope you'll, uh, if, if, it, if it's a good fit for you, consider applying to this Dallas hybrid school, because I, for one, am very excited to have it in my trustee district. And uh, my personal email address is dustinmarshall at dallasisd.org. So if you do have any further questions or feedback about the school, I would love to hear from you. Um, and I appreciate you attending tonight. Thanks so much and take care. Thank you, Trustee. We have have a number of questions that came in um, rather quickly. First is a comment, and this is to, um, to um, Seth and your team. It says, beautiful school, classical, exterior, and modern interior. Awesome. So that's a great big thumbs up to your teams on capturing that. Um, we have a question here, and I think um, Mr. Bates, David Bates, is um, over our maintenance and construction department. This was going to go to you. 
says currently neighbors are using the field at this location as a dark dog park. I'm assuming that's changing. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, we're going to encourage our, our community to uh, walk around our school and, and be on the property. We're not fencing the entire thing in, um, but we are fencing a portion of that in for our kids to have recess and, and to be safe and secure. Um, but we're not putting chain link fence up. We're going to do black rod iron fence and we're going to do it's going to be very classy for the for the neighbors. Wonderful. Um, so there's a question here. Um, when you when the children are at home, um, the days they're at home, are you going to get a laptop or would we, you need to already own your own laptop? Thank you for the question. The answer is that we will be providing a laptop for every child in our school. Wonderful. Uh, we've had the clarity here on the grade levels. Okay, here's a great question and a big question. When can families do an actual walkthrough of the school? I know right now you guys are remodeling. I don't think we went through a timeline, Seth, but. Uh, Seth, uh, you know, I can field this question. I think we're going to have to play that by ear as, the, um, you know, the contractors are in there now working. We've already did some demo work. But at a certain portion of percentage complete, we will be able to facilitate some tours. But uh, we won't know that in, for the next four, four weeks or so. Okay. At that point, we can kind of circle back and give a timeline of, of when it's safe to have folks in without hard hats or, or safety vests or anything like that. Wonderful. And so you know, so everyone will know, you can keep track of this and other bond programs for Bond 2020 at dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020. So go out there. The page will be active tomorrow. You can begin keeping track of this particular project and announcements regarding this project and other Bond 2020 projects will be posted there. If you're interested in Bond 2015, that website is dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2015. Um, here's another question. Will the students have like an icebreaker week or something where they will get to meet each, each other in person before the first day of school? So absolutely, we are trying to plan that. Um, it all depends also part of our the construction, but we are finding alternate um, locations just in case, but, but we definitely want to engage our families. We definitely want our kids to know each other before the first day of school because we truly believe that that will help the integration of everybody into our new model of learning. Fantastic. And it says, um, if you are accepted at hybrid prep, do you still have, I'm not sure if actually, um, Miss Dan um, Ash, Daniela, you, I'm not sure if your question, I'm going to try to interpret it. If I get it wrong, if you could please just clarify in the comments. What I'm reading here is if you're accepted at hybrid prep, do you still have a chance you're not in? I think she means if you get an acceptance notice, does that mean you actually have a spot or could you lose your spot for some reason? And if, if, Ms., um, if Ash, if I'm um, incorrect in that, asking that question wrong, if you could please just go back in the comments and let us know. So I guess the question is, if you're accepted, are you really in, or could you possibly lose your spot? I understand, I understand, I understand. This is very important. If you get in, you need to accept that seat. That's what you need to do. If you accept that seat, that seat is yours. But mom, dad, pop, grandma, abuelita, titi, I need you to accept that seat so that if you grab that seat and if that seat is yours. So what I'm hearing is, when you get an email, saying you've been accepted into any of our choice schools in order to ensure that you have a seat coming in the fall, you need to follow the instructions on that email as quickly as possible because the seats do, there is a, a wait list for most of these campuses and we wanna make sure that if this is your choice school, the, uh, the best fit school for your family that you have, that you're taking action on that. So check your emails, make sure that you're answering your phone calls from Dallas ISD and you're saying yes when the time comes. Um, there's a question about how soon will you know about adding seventh and eighth grade in the future? Well, that's in the plans. So we know now that we know that in the future that next year we will be moving with those grade levels. So as we can understand clearly, the sixth graders, the, the currently the sixth, the sixth graders that will come in this year as your inaugural class 
when they become seventh graders, you will grow and accommodate them for seventh graders. When they become eighth graders, they'll grow to eighth grade. If there are any spots available for seventh and eighth grade at that time, then that will be announced and you will take additional applications as we do for all of our choice school programs. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Okay, great. Yes, and Ms. Bell, I wanna clarify, we will for sure expand fourth through eighth grade. Um, and based on community input, parent input, as we're developing out the school, we will add additional grades. We wanna make sure that parents that are coming to us in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade this year, we do have the assurance that we will go, grow through eighth grade at least. Fantastic. And you, and for for both of for both for our, Dr. Nancy and Dr. Olga, you have a very excited parent here. Um, the Redican family just gave a big thumbs up that said, "Yes, we're in." So you have a parent here that's giving you a big shout out that they have gotten their spot. So welcome to Dallas ISD and welcome to the Dallas Hybrid family. We're so excited for you. Um, as we round out tonight's meeting again. You'll be able to follow information on this project, both on the bond website at dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020, but also the school has its own Facebook page and it's at Dallas Hybrid Prep. So if you look for them on Facebook, you can find them. There are design meetings going on and other information they'll be sharing there. Um, Dr. Bernardino, if you wanna um, have any closing remarks at this time. Again, I just wanna reiterate the importance of you submitting your application um, not only does that guarantee you a spot, but it, it um, allows us to hear your voice and input as this school is growing and developing. And so we know that parent input, parent involvement is critical to the success of every single school. And so we don't want you to miss out. Submit your application. We'll send you an acceptance letter and you can engage in that conversation. Wonderful. And again, we want to reiterate what Trustee Marshall said. The Dallas ISD is committed to, to helping families find the best fit school for your child and for your family. And DallasISD.org forward slash choose Dallas ISD is a wealth of information about not just our choice program schools, our magnet school programs, our application based programs, but also about our neighborhood schools as well. So parents, if you're looking for a great educational partner, um, Dallas ISD is here for you. And again, we are home. So come on home to Dallas ISD and look at that website at choosedallasisd.org for additional information about Dallas Hybrid as well as our other schools across the district. So with that being said, we're gonna ask that um, Dr. Romero would close us out for this evening. Once again, I just wanna say thank you to all the families, everybody that is watching today. I wanna say thank you to Ms. Bell, to the uh, Bond Office, to the Office of Transformation and Innovation, our school leadership, our uh, trustee, Mr. Marshall, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your support. Um, we know that we, you have our back. Um, and everybody else, go go again. Let me make sure that I say it right. DallasISD.org slash choose Dallas ISD. And go and choose Dallas uh, Hybrid because this is the option for you today. Wonderful. We thank everyone for joining us again. And we wish you have a very wonderful rest of your evening. And remember, choose DallasISD.org. We're here to be your educational partner. Thank you for joining us and good night.